Nikon D50 Teardown and Review Part 4 Top and Rear Covers Starting with the rear cover. These are usually simple in most DSLRs. Exceptions are top of the line models like Canon 1DX or Nikon D4. Usually there is an LCD screen, as you can see here, and a bunch of buttons, some switches and rotary encoder from time to time. This model, like many older cameras, has LCD screen and LCD window as separate parts. New cameras usually have these integrated, just like in case of iPhones and iPads. Which is nice because these look better. There is no dust problem between the LCD window and the LCD screen itself and they are usually much thinner. So this got improved over the years. What got worse is buttons. Here you can see these silicone rubbers that go under plastic keys. And these are responsible for this nice soft feel when you press a button. It feels good and it's completely silent. New cheap DSLRs usually have those crappy switches instead of silicone rubbers. So when you press a button you can hear that empty plastic box type of click sound. Just like cheap Chinese Christmas toys, it's just terrible. When it comes to problems, common problems with rear covers, besides scratches, cracks and this type of obvious things, it's liquid and corrosion. Even a tiny amount of water can make one of the buttons permanently shorted. Very common. It often appears to be a big problem. The rear LCD doesn't come up at all. There is no reaction to buttons. And if you are not aware of this while trying to repair your camera, it can be very challenging to find what's causing this. A quick contact cleaning is usually enough to solve this problem. Okay, now the top cover. It's a bit more interesting. Overall, top covers can be a bit time consuming. Depending on what the problem is, there are many screws, wires, flex cables, sometimes the flash board is integrated with the top cover. Flash head release mechanism. This part controls the flash head pop-up. This is a solenoid. When you press the flash button, the coil inside gets powered and pulls this metal rod, which is connected to a flash hook, and the flash head pops up. The most common problem here is this plastic hook. When it cracks, the flash head no longer can be closed. It stays open all the time. On the other side, you can see contacts for the mode dial position detection. They do require some cleaning from time to time. Flash head. Notice the switch over here. Quite often that plastic hinge gets pushed in and the switch is no longer working properly. The microcontroller gets no flash head open signal and it doesn't fire at all. This part comes as a complete assembly, so if there is anything wrong with it, like the flash tube or the trigger coil, I replace this whole assembly. Next are hot shoe contacts. While the soldering these, it's important to do it quickly. Otherwise, metal contact pins will heat up and melt the plastic part. It will be visible from the top and it always looks terrible. Now you can see screws that are holding the hot shoe. LCD assembly. I'm gently wiggling it out, being careful about flex cables. And here is an LCD controller and some other minor parts. Power switch contacts. Very often require some cleaning. Shutter release switch. Very often requires a replacement. These micro switches overall don't last too long. That's why you won't find them in professional cameras. Dial. This is a very typical rotary encoder design. Traces are phase shifted, so the main microcontroller can detect the direction in which you're turning this dial. If this encoder starts to behave erratically or simply doesn't register every single click, it's usually just cleaning that's necessary to make it work properly again. Any cracks within this plastic part will qualify it for replacement. And it happens quite often, unfortunately. Now, some tips on how to put this stuff together so that it works again. There are many parts here. Most of them are quite delicate. So if you put them back in the wrong order and secure tightly with screws, some of them might become bent or they might crack. The camera is not going to work properly. You will have to lose a lot more time to disassemble it again. So it's important to take notes during the disassembly it just makes life much easier later. 
Okay, so this top cover is complete again. More teardowns and reviews are coming soon, I'm working on them. I'm still not sure if I'll be making them as one long video or many shorter parts, as I did with this D50 teardown. I would love to see your opinion about this. Also, if there is some specific subject you would like to see more about during future teardowns, please don't hesitate and let me know. Really, anything. Maybe besides camera specs and sensor cleaning and this type of stuff, anything else is fine. Thanks a lot for all your great comments so far, they are really motivating, and I'll see you next time. Bye.